Hey everyone, I am your astrologer, Wonder Girl, taking you to new heights. Here's your weekly forecast for the week of Sunday, October 28th to Saturday, November 3rd, 2018. Now what I'm going to do in this video, since it's a little bit different than what I normally do, is I'm going to spend the first few minutes giving you a general horoscope for the entire week uh, period time frame that I just mentioned. This will be a general forecast, again, that will apply to all signs. Then after I do that, I'm going to spend um, the next part of this video breaking down the weekly astrology by each sign. So I'll give each sign a weekly horoscope. It's going to be just like I normally do for the most part, except it's going to be all combined together into one video. Uh, the reason why I want to do that is because I still want to give you all that great astrology that you all love from me, but I did want to make it like 10 times easier for me and 10 times faster for me to edit. And it takes forever for me to split up all the videos from all the signs and to edit those separately. So I'm going to try it this way instead and just put everything into one long video. I'm going to try to put the timestamps down below in the comments for when I mention each sign and at one time so that you can easily skip to that part of the video. But if I do not get around to that right away, if some of you could put the timestamps for each of the signs that you've been watching and listening uh, as well down below in the comment section, that would be super helpful, not just for me, but for everyone else watching this video. So, um, so I'd appreciate it uh, if, if, if someone did that or if we can make that happen uh, somehow to get those down there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do uh, this week, talk about what's going on and I really do think that what, what has happened last week, especially in this week, is very, very rare in the astrology, creating rare circumstances in our life that we have never experienced before. Before I get into that though, I do want to let everyone know that I um, am offering, just to give you a little bit more of my offerings, um, some services. I do have my personal astrology coaching service that I am doing um, now. It's really important to me. It's really close to my heart. I've been wanting to do this for a really long time. Um, where I will be a personal astrology coach. Uh, to a few of you, spaces are limited that are interested in that kind of thing. What will come with this personal astrology coaching service is that I will meet uh, with each of you three times a week. That is 12 times a month. That's a lot to talk to you all about what's going on in your life, about important issues, um, to really dive in deep to what's going on in your chart, to your personality, to current transits, uh, to kind of help give you the answers and more um, deeper personal answers to some of the questions in your life that you may have. In these sessions, we can either talk about whatever it is that you wanna talk about that you're interested in, and I can plan things around that, um, or uh, you can kinda of let me guide you through your chart and through your transits, and that's what we can talk about when we meet. Specifically, what I know for sure I will wanna talk about with you all every month will be your lunar return. We'll pull up your lunar return and see your challenges um, and the strengths and weaknesses that will come up for every 30 day time period uh, in your life. So we'll talk about that. Also, we'll talk about every new moon and every full moon when you meet with me as well. Okay, this type of coaching will also be very, very good for those of you who are going through a major transition right now in your life or have some big questions as well uh, going on that you want answered. A lot of times people come to me for specific things about relationships or about a big career change or about something that in your life that's not working and this to me would be the best way to deal with that. I can give you all answers in my 30 minute and an hour readings which I have available which I love doing which are tons of fun but I feel like this uh, is really going to help me help you understand yourself better with more coaching and to go deeper into your own chart and personality. I think the human personality is complex as represented by the birth chart. I think there's many dis different facets to it that come out in different ways at different times and that really needs more attention and more care when discussing it. So that's really why I wanted to um, to release this this service and to offer that to you. I was also going through a really hard time in my life a few years ago, which is when I got into astrology, among other things that I used to help me during that time. Um, and what really helped me was not just looking at my astrology chart once and then putting it away, but was coming back to it time after time to get personal insights that were good for me personally and to get more of the depth that I needed and the reminders, the constant reminders by looking at my chart of who I was and what I was going through. And I wanna offer a lot of that to you to help some of you out. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, please check out the link down below in my description box. And you can also find the link there as well to my 30 minute and my one hour readings uh, too, if you just want something a little bit, um, a little bit quicker as well. Now for your weekly horoscope. What I wanna start with, 
maybe I'll start with, yeah, right here with the sun, which at the beginning of this week will be in a conjunction with Venus, even though this chart is for Thursday and Venus has moved on <laughs> in Scorpio, opposing Uranus, squaring the nodes, sextiling Saturn. I'm going to start there. This is a major alignment that happened last week, especially at the full moon in Taurus. However, it is still lingering uh, at the beginning of this week. There are still some things we may be taking care of. What this alignment to me has a lot to do with are going to be choices. They're going to be choices that you're going to have to make, especially with an opposition. Whenever you see an opposition, immediately think choices. That's because you've got two planets here that exactly oppose each other. They have opposite wants and needs. How can you do two things at the same time that are exactly opposite? You can't. You have to choose between the two or you have to make compromises in order to accommodate them both, which is still a choice. A compromise is still a choice to do some things, okay? And I think that's what's going on. What the choice is about that we may have had to have to make last week that we may still be making this week is going to be about our relationships with the sun and venus being in scorpio the sign of relationships of your deepest most intimate relationships and between yourself with uranus and taurus your own needs your own value systems your own sense of worth would also would it also could be a choice between with the sun and venus and scorpio are changes in life that you want to make. Instability versus stability and Taurus, what you can do to feel more secure in your life. The choice is also maybe between here with the sun and Scorpio, your wants and your desires that you have and even your fears and your insecurities when you get in Scorpio and your needs, what it is that you need to feel more confident, more secure and more stable in your life. What you need here to put your life in a place that you you can be okay with, okay? And I think that's what we were having to choose last week and into this week was how do I, especially with the full moon being here in Taurus, how do I satisfy my own needs? How do I get my own needs met? How do I be more stable and secure in my life? How do I create more confidence or more space for me to be confident in my life when there's so much chaos that's been going on, when there's so many things from relationships that other people want from me that I want with them that we were trying to figure out? And I think we may still be having to make some of those choices at the beginning of this week. But if you can make those decisions to support your own personal stability, to support your own personal needs, to feel more confident, more stable, and more secure in your life, and less chaotic, it's going to help you. It's going to help you here with the North Node and Leo to be happier with your life, to be happier with who you are. It's also going to help you here with the Sextile to Saturn to start to put your life in a right direction that you feel much better about, to start to commit to building your life and moving forward. Okay, so I do like that. And I think this week, again, to repeat myself, there may be some choices and decisions we did not make last week that we still have to make, that we must make now before we can move forward, especially with the square to the nodes being here. Once you make those choices and decisions to support your own best interests, to be more confident and to own your worth as an individual, then... I think good things can start to happen. That's because Jupiter and Mercury are going to make a conjunction towards Wednesday at the last few degrees of Scorpio. I think what this can bring is more understanding in your life, more understanding of in Scorpio what you deeply desire, of what you really want. It can help you to get better perspectives on your desires and your wants. It can also help you to understand some of your subconscious patterns, especially with both of these planets making a trine to Chiron in Pisces. It can help you to overcome some things from the past and some subconscious patterns may be deeply rooted in the past so that you can finally move forward creating a life that's better for you. All right, Jupiter as well in a conjunction to Mercury can help you understand why these things had to happen. Why did I experience this in my life? Why did, were the past few years hard for me? This alignment can help. Jupiter being the planet of your belief systems always asks 
why did this happen? That to me is why Jupiter is so lucky. Jupiter is not lucky just because it's lucky. Jupiter is lucky because it understands deeply the way things work and function and therefore can use that function to its advantage. So I think what's going on here is once we make the choice, not before we make the choice, but after we make the choice to support the things that we need to feel more stable, more secure, and more confident in our life, then the understanding comes about why we had to make that choice, about why that choice was or was not good for us, about what the past few years have been about and what they all mean so that we can get more excited, more optimistic, and feel much better now about where exactly our life is going, all right? <laughs> That's what I see happening. We may not know quite exactly where the future is, what's going to happen in the future, especially with Mars and Aquarius making a semi-square over to Saturn. We still may not know quite what our future looks like and how exactly we can build and work towards a future that is more liberating and inspiring to us. But I think with Jupiter here, in a conjunction with Mercury, we at least are seeing new and different doors start to open in our life, even if we don't know where exactly which door will lead. And I think that's positive, <laughs> even if it's a little bit hard to, to, to see the bigger picture of things, all right? And really needing to allow yourself towards the end of the week to think and to communicate with Mercury involved, to talk to yourself, to talk to other people about what you've experienced lately and recently, about some of the decisions you feel you have to make about some big turning points in your life, because I feel like it can open the doors for you and give you the perspective that you need in order to move on, all right? I really, really like that. What I also really like about the same time this is happening, and this is going to be on Wednesday, is at the same time we start to get more of the understanding and more of the optimism about our life now that we've made some hard decisions and now that some hard things in the past few years of our life, possibly since the last time Saturn was in Scorpio four years ago happened over, then all of a sudden Venus moves back into Libra on Wednesday. <clears throat> <coughs> This is very positive because Venus hates Scorpio where it's been the past few weeks and it loves Libra. So when Venus moves back into Libra, it's now saying towards the end of this week, okay, things have been hard in relationships. Again, you had to make some hard decisions. Things were up in the air and you had to decide what you wanted. And now that you made that decision, not only do you know, are you getting more understanding of who you are and of what you want and why things had to occur the way they had to occur? But you're also now able to find more of the balance in your relationships because the worst is over. It's now easier for you to have relationships that you want and that you need so that you can move forward and to start to, 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 to feel better. It's also going to help you too to balance some of your own emotions so that you can move on. It's like we may have made a mess in our lives the past few months, the past few years, and especially the past week at this full moon. And now all of a sudden with the Jupiter Mercury and with the Venus and Libra, it's saying, okay, time to clean up the mess. Time to get right with all the people that you pissed off or all the people that pissed off you. Time to get right with yourself, <laughs> you know, and time to move on finding a new balance, finding a new normal after a huge change has been made or has been initiated, okay, um, and, and has happened. All right, so I think that's what's going on there, making that more positive. Now, the only negative thing that I really see in the chart that I haven't really mentioned is going to be right here with Mercury. You know, I have made, for so far in this video, <clears throat> I've made Mercury in a conjunction with Jupiter, out to be very positive. Um, but that's not the entire story, especially not right now, because not only is Mercury going to conjunct Jupiter this week, but on Wednesday, the same day that Venus moves back into Libra, Mercury is going to move into Sagittarius. And not only is Mercury going to move into Sagittarius, but it will by that time already be in its shadow period, getting ready to go retrograde. This is problematic. The reason why this is problematic is because Mercury, not only is about to go retrograde, does not like Sagittarius. The reason why Mercury does not like Sagittarius is because it's very hard for, it's very hard to communicate well and to communicate clearly and concisely when Mercury is in Sagittarius. 
That's because Mercury likes to be here in Virgo and Mercury likes to be in Gemini. When Mercury is in Virgo, the way that people communicate with Mercury and Virgo, very detailed, very disciplined, very strategic, very practical, you know exactly what they're thinking. They do not mince words. When Mercury is in Gemini, there's lots of information to share. They're very clever. They're very quick-witted. Mercury and Gemini can communicate anything to anyone and exactly in the way that they need it to be communicated in. When Mercury is in Sagittarius, that is not the case. Mercury in Sagittarius gets lost in big ideas. It gets lost in thought. It has so many thoughts and it has, it has no idea what to do with all the things that it's thinking. Okay. And I think this starts to become an issue is all right we've gotten to this point by the end of the week where we've reached a major milestone moment in our life we have literally broken habits broken things from the past that have lingered that have been with us for years that have been hard for us to get over and we're starting to settle into this new life that we've created and we're starting to understand the fact that our life has now changed and things are different and we need to have a new normal but we don't know quite where things are going and we don't know quite how to make sense of and we don't know quite what our new belief systems need to be in order to accommodate the change that we've now accommodated and I think that is definitely part of the hard thing that occurs okay I've done what I needed to do I've made choices I'm in a much better spot but oh wait a minute I'm in this better spot but what now what next where do I go where do I go it's like we had a list of 10 questions we had a list of 10 questions that we wanted answered from the past few years of our life and it's like we take them to get answered <laughs> at this point of our life and we get the answers that it is that we need to these 10 questions and then once we get those answers we realized wait a second now I've got 20 more now I've got 20 more questions that I need answered or wait a minute I had 10 questions and some of them were answered but there's still more that I need the answers to that I don't have and I think that's kind of where we are right now with the astrology once we get to the end of the week is okay I've got answers I've been waiting for for years. I'm feeling much better about my life. I'm feeling like even though it was crazy, I now made some changes that I need to make. I can start to stabilize. I can move on. I can reach the future. But wait a second. What exactly is this future? What do I do? Who am I? What do I believe? What's next? It's exciting. There's a lot going on, but I just don't know and cannot make sense of it all and cannot plan and strategize in the way that I need. And I think that's what needs to be worked out, not only this week, but that's going to take a major toll on us and be a major theme over the next few months. Okay, we're kind of in this weird spot where we're no longer in the past, but we don't know exactly what the future holds and needing to be present in the moment as we figure that out, needing to have faith that the things that need to occur will occur and needing to not pressure yourself too much if you don't have all of the details and all of the answers yet, be happy with the answers that you currently do have or have gotten. So that's where I'm going to leave you uh, off at this week. New frontiers. Life is wide open right in front of you. You need to congratulate yourselves. Give yourself a pat on the back and not stress out too much if you don't know quite where the future is going going yet and not only that but even if you don't know quite exactly how to get there step by step uh, to create a life that you feel is better for you all of the answers will come you will get more certainty more understanding of what you need to do to put your life in a place that's more inspiring to you it just most likely will not come in the next few weeks and months as mercury is retrograde in sagittarius your card for the week the knight of cups reversed Knight of Cups to me, whenever I see this card, is one about emotional, like, chaos, like, turmoil. Either, like, emotions being everywhere and not really having control of it or not having the feelings that you want to feel. It's like there's a feeling of, like, disappointment or emptiness or loss or something along those lines, which is, like, kind of weird because I feel like we have reached a big moment that we haven't, we have reached like a place in our life that I don't think any of us have really ever experienced doing things differently before. And so part of me is like, you should be feeling really good that you've kind of reached this spot in your life that's different than anything where you've overcome a lot from the past, but maybe you're still feeling like, okay, I reached this spot, but now what do I need to do? And now where, do, where are things going? Especially with this Jupiter Mercury stuff happening 
here and and maybe a feeling of loss and i think this card's saying well hey don't there's no need to feel lost like the reason why you're feeling lost right now or if you are feeling lost in your life is because there is so much potential and so many new opportunities for you i think the best advice with this that i could say is to not let your feelings get the best of you to find ways to act on your feelings in appropriate ways if you're feeling lost if you're feeling restless if you're feeling upset you got to figure out how to channel these emotions into projects, into an action, into things that really can work for you so that you don't get lost and feeling sad or upset. Same goes for the opposite. If there are some of you that are so excited about life, which I think the, the, this card can also bring. If there are some of you that are so excited and see so many things coming before you, I think another message of this card as well is to pick a few things that you're excited about and work on them um, slowly so that you don't get overrun with all your passion and then accomplish nothing so being able to control your emotions and put a plan of action in place to sustain them in a productive way I think is going to be super super important this week now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into each of your um, weekly horoscopes uh, by sun sign so follow along if you're interested in hearing yours I'm gonna start with Aries and go straight down the list till we get around to Pisces now Aries what we've got going on for you this week is the Sun right here in Scorpio with Venus and in opposition with Uranus and Taurus Scorpio for you rules your eighth house of changes endings and beginnings as well as your deepest most intimate relationships and Taurus here with Uranus is in your second house of money stability and of your own personal needs. You may have had to make a choice at the end of last week and into this week um, about perhaps what changes in life you want or need to make in order to bring more stability to you. You may also have had to make some choices about your relationships, what your relationships want versus what you want and need. With the full moon here last week being over Uranus, I think the choice you need to make needs to be in favor of you doing more of what you need to bring more stability and security to your life and even doing what you need to bring more money and income as well to you. So that is definitely what I would recommend. Once you make that choice to support your own interests and not necessarily the interests of other people, and once you make that choice to bring more stability and security to you, it is then going to help you. That's because we do have this alignment squaring the North Node here in Leo, in your fifth house of happiness. You making that choice is going to make you happier, uh, more free to express your love with other people. All right, you also making this choice is going to help you here where Saturn is in Capricorn, which for you is in your 10th house of your career and your reputation. You making that choice is not only going to make you happier, but it's also going to help you to put your life in a better direction or to have the career and the reputation that it is that you want. All right. While that's going on, there's also going to be Jupiter and Mercury conjunct in your 8th house too. Once you make this choice to support your own stability and security, not only are you going to be happier and putting your life in a better place, but it may also help you to get some understanding here on what changes you need to make in your life to feel better and on what you really, really want and desire and how it is that you can start to work with some of your most deep and intimate relationships now that they know what you want and need to put your life in a better place, okay? This Jupiter Mercury is also going to be making a trine to Chiron in your 12th house of the past of your insides and of your spirituality I think as well helping you after you make this choice uh, not only to figure out what you want and need especially from other relationships and other people but it's going to help you to feel much better internally and spiritually so that you can move forward while that's going on, also around Wednesday, we're going to have Venus here moving back into Libra, which is your seventh house of partnerships and in relationships. So I do think, again, your relationships with people will start to improve. Perhaps what you needed last week was to assert your own worth, was to assert yourself, was to get some of your needs met. And once you got some of your needs met and taken care of, now with Venus moving back into Libra in your seventh house, it may be a lot easier for you to start to associate with the people that are meant for you or with the people that are in your life because they now know what you need and because you made you made some moves in order to get it all right so that's what i see there relationships starting to balance out the only challenge could be here with mercury moving into sagittarius which is going to be your ninth house of something new and different that you have not done before 
So what I see going on here uh, is that you made some choices in your life to support your own needs that are now making it better for you to feel more comfortable in your life and have some of the relationships that it is that you want. But perhaps now the challenge could be what is next for you now that you've done this? What do you need to do that's new or different? And how especially can you begin to work with other people, with your relationships, doing something that you haven't done before? I think you may have some idea of what you want to do. You might have some kind of inkling uh, that you want to do something else, bring more passion and excitement back to your life, but you may not be quite sure on how exactly to do this new thing, on what it means, and on what exactly the ultimate outcome and result will be of that. And I think, again, needing to be patient if all of the answers are not made clear to you. Do your best to stabilize your relationships, to get your own needs taken care of, so you can feel happier about where your life is going and in time it will be made clear to you what new or different thing you need to do in order to bring more of the passion and the excitement back to your life and how exactly to go about getting that all right Aries so that's what I've got for you now your card is the four of swords for the week this to me is a card of rest and recuperation there could have been a lot going on last week at the full moon this week even making lots of choices really the past few years which this alignment is triggering and i think this card is saying it's time for you to take a minute take a break to come back to yourself to come back to your senses to rest to figure out what's going on and to just take care of some things of what's going on inside you know, I personally believe that there's a lot of insight that can come from sleeping. There's a lot of stuff that your mind works out when you take some time alone to yourself. And I think that's what this week is calling for. Once you make the decisions, once you initiated some big things in your life that I think are huge culminations of things that have been going on, it's okay to take some time to yourself. It may feel like you're not doing much, but I think there's actually a lot going on behind the scenes subconsciously of your mind. If you just take a minute to yourself and take a break from everyone else to say, look, I need to get right with myself and I need to rest <laughs> after everything that's happened. It can be a little bit hard for my Aries. I know you guys can be very active and not like to rest, but sometimes taking a back seat, even if it's only for a week, can help prepare you to act in new, different, and better ways, which I do see coming for you eventually um, as time moves on. All right, so that's what I've got for you, Aries. Now, a Taurus, what we've got going on for you this week is going to be right here where the sun is in Scorpio and in opposition with Uranus in your sign. Okay, with the sun in Scorpio and Venus there too at the beginning of the week, that's your seventh house of partnerships and relationships, usually of the one-on-one -on -one variety. And Uranus and Taurus, of course, is your first house in your sign. So perhaps there are some choices that you had to make last week and uh, moving into this week about yourself and your relationships. Who are you in your relationships? Uh, who are your relationships with you? Do people get you? Are you partnering with the right people or are you not uh, that were coming up? All right, with Uranus here in Taurus in your sign where the full moon was last week, I think the choice needed to be in favor of you doing more of what you need and getting your own needs met, okay? I think that's the choice that you needed to make. If you could do those things that you need to bring more stability to your life, I think it's gonna help you here where the North Node is which for you is going to be in your fourth house of home and a family with the sun squaring the North Node uh, and Uranus as well. And I think you making a decision here to do the things that you need to feel more stable and more secure in your life uh, is then going to help you to work better with home and family, to start to feel like you're building more of a foundation in your life that can support some things that you want to build on later on. And I think it's also going to help you start to feel better emotionally. Also with this alignment, making a sextile to Saturn and with Saturn in your ninth house of something new and different that you have not done before, I think you making the choice to get your own needs met is not only gonna help you feel better with home and family, feel more stable in life, but it's also gonna help you to work towards something new new relationships, new chapters with the current relationships that you have that I think can be very, very positive to help you open up some doors there and even bring more passion back into your life with the people that are there. While that's going on, we also do have Jupiter and Mercury in a conjunction also in your seventh house. So after you make this choice here to do what it is that you need to feel better and more stable, not only is it gonna help you to feel better and to do something new, but it's also gonna give you lots of understanding about your relationships, what's going on in your relationships, why your relationships have been one way or haven't been another way, or what you need to do differently or better with your relationships uh, as well uh, to create situations that resonate more deeply with you, right? We also do have 
Mercury and Jupiter here making a trine over to Chiron, which for you is in your 11th house of your goals, your dreams, and your hopes for the future. So I think the more that you can communicate and think about your relationships towards the end of the week, it's also going to help you to, to not only come into new chapters with relationships, but to see a future with the people in your life too that I think will be positive and better than what it was previously. Around that time as well, we also do have Venus moving back into Libra, which for you is going to be your sixth house of your job and of your daily routines. So what should start to come in towards the end of the week is it should get a lot easier for you now to uh, to, to work on the day to day, to have a job that you like, to organize your life better on the day to day, to feel like your life is less in disarray. And, and it's going to also help you to, to be healthier. So maybe what needed to happen was that you needed to work some things out with your relationships um, about how you interact with people and how people interact with you so that you could start to see a better future with those relationships and have better daily routines, organize your life more, have a better job, work better with people in more functional, more efficient kind of ways, all right? And I think that's what starts to go on is it starts to get easier for you to do things, hopefully, on the day-to-day -day now that some of those questions about relationships relationships have been worked out, okay? Um, even though I think things are starting to stabilize a bit for you on the day-to-day, -day, there could be more questions, <laughs> even though you've gotten some questions answered about relationships, there could still be more things you may have to work out with the people in your life over time. That's because while all this is going on, we also do have Mercury entering Sagittarius, uh, about to go retrograde. And that for you, Taurus, is going to be in your eighth house of changes, of endings and beginnings, and of your deepest, most intimate relationships. So even though you've got a lot of things worked out with your relationships and you're trying to restore the balance to your relationships and do things better at work and on the day to day, I think there could still be more changes in your life that you feel like you need to make in order to create a life that you really want and in order to work better with the other people in your life. Okay, it may be a little bit confusing. You may not know quite exactly what changes you want or need to make other than the fact that maybe you feel like there's a change that you do need to make uh, in some way. Um, so that could be a little bit difficult there, but needing to not stress out and needing to not pressure yourself too much if you're unsure of what you need to do next in order to deepen or have better relationships and a life that you like better. Okay, answers will come, more answers will come, but it just may take some time. Now, Taurus, your card for the day, for the week, <laughs> is the Knight of Wands reversed. When I see the Knight of Wands, this to me could indicate too much passion or not enough passion. Maybe you're too excited about things, um, for better or for worse, uh, too angry about things, and sometimes what this is saying is needing to temper your passions, needing to temper your emotions. Don't be too hasty. A lot of times, you're not, Taurus, you're not typically a hasty sign, but it's saying, look, you need to take some of the things that you're feeling, some of your passions, and you need to channel them into appropriate uh, outcomes. You may also need to take things a little bit slower uh, as well uh, than you have been in order to get things done. Don't lose the passion as you do things in your life, but just make sure that you're not letting some of your feelings and some of your emotions get the best of you this week, all right? Um, needing to really make sure that you're moving forward on the things that you feel in a more disciplined kind of way. Not a super time to rock the boat, <laughs> per se. I think we've done enough of that last week, um, but a time to be a little bit more disciplined about what's going on, especially as the week starts to move on towards Wednesday when Venus moves back into Libra. So that's what I've got for you this week, Taurus. Now, Gemini, what we've got going on for you this week is the sun here in Scorpio and in opposition with Uranus and Taurus. Scorpio, for you, Gemini, rules your sixth house of your job and your daily routines, while Uranus here in Taurus is in your twelfth house of your insides, your spirituality, and also of the past. I think what choice you had to make uh, last week and maybe a little bit at the beginning of this week is going to be about your job and it's going to be about your inner sense of peace and and uh, and uh, well-being, okay? Perhaps you've had a lot of stuff going on at work on the day-to-day -day with your job, and I think it's time for you at this full moon to focus more on what you need to feel better spiritually, what you need to feel better on the inside. It's no longer about having a job for you just to have a job. It's no longer about doing things in the day-to-day because -day I got a lot of responsibility and this is what I gotta do. 
it's time for you Gemini to start to have a job and to start to have a set of daily routines that honor your own sense of spirituality that honor your what you need emotionally and internally same with health it's not just about your physical health Gemini it's also about your mental and your emotional health and I think that was the choice that you had to make at the end of last week into this week is what do I need in my life to start paying attention to my own spiritual internal needs even if it means I have to sacrifice my job some things I do on the day to day or change my job and daily routines so that I can create situations that satisfy me and bring me more peace inside okay I think once you make that decision to honor your emotions and to honor your spirituality, it's then going to help you hear where the North Node is in Leo. And that for you is in your third house of talk and communication with the sun making a square here. Um, and I think the more you can create a job or a set of daily routines that really resonates with you deeply, it's going to help you to communicate more openly about your heart and about what's on your heart uh, and about uh, what makes you happy. All right. Also, as well with this alignment, making a sextile over to Saturn and with Saturn here in your eighth house of changes of endings and beginnings, I think you choosing a job or a set of daily routines that makes you feel better spiritually and emotionally is not only going to allow you to talk more freely about what's going on with you and about what makes you happy, but it's also, again, going to help you to change your job and your daily routines to make it better or to work with people more deeply and more intimately on the day to day in a way that it is that you like right while that's going on there we also do have jupiter and mercury coming into a conjunction in your sixth house so once you make that choice about your job and your daily routines or change it so that you can feel better about what you're doing at work and about your health i think then you're going to start to get the understanding of what you really want or need to do on the day to day in order to create situations that are better for you Right, Jupiter and Mercury are also going to make a trine to Chiron here in Pisces, which is your 10th house of your career, your reputation, and your social standing. So the more, so once you make these choices about your job and daily routines and start to understand better what you want or need to do on the day-to-day -day better to feel much more comfortable with you and with yourself on the inside, I think then it's going to help you figure out what you need to do with your career. It's going to help you start to put your career in a better place, put your life in a better place, put your life in the direction that it is that you want. And give you more of the reputation and the social standing that it is that you need. All right, so that's what's happening there. While that's going on, we also do have Venus retrograding back into Libra in your fifth house of happiness. So once you get all that stuff figured out about your job, about your daily routines, it's then going to help you to be happier, to find more of the joy in life, to spend more time working on passion projects, working on your business, doing things you like, finding more of the romance in your life, even spending more time with kids or romantic relationships. The only challenge that I might see is going to come a little bit after this, towards Wednesday and Thursday, when Mercury, your ruler, Gemini, moves into Sagittarius going retrograde. That for you is gonna be in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships of the one-on-one -on -one variety. What that can bring this, the end of this week, and really for the next few weeks, big questions for you about your relationships, about your partnerships, about who you're working with one-on-one -on -one and how you're working with these people as well. Okay, I think you're getting to a better place where you're feeling much happier about what you're doing on the day to day. You're feeling much more at peace on the inside with yourself. But maybe there are some other things that you're just confused about. Now that I'm better with my routines, who's in my life? How do I work with these people? In what way do I work with relationships? In what way do they work with me? Are we committed? Are we not committed? Um, that I think could come into the picture. And needing to be okay if you got some of the answers that you need to get your life in a more stable and secure place. Um, but if the, uh, there are other questions that you may still have about relationships that are not answered, you will figure out what needs to happen with your relationships and how you can work towards better situations with those people in time it just may not come for you this week and it may not come for you in the next few weeks either and to just hang tight uh, with that all right now your card for the week Gemini is the wheel of fortune uh, reversed so this is an interesting card um, sometimes when this card's reversed I actually consider it to be like a reversal of fortune sometimes bad fortune bad luck but that's obviously not the way I want to interpret this I mean I'm clearly a Gemini too um, so I don't want to interpret as that I think what this is saying I'm just this is the way I'm gonna I'm gonna do it it's a change of fortune maybe your life was going one way 
uh, you were doing one thing in your life and maybe all of a sudden this week you realize I need to do something different with my life. I need to totally change things up. I need to do the opposite of what I was doing to do things differently or to do things better. And I think when I see this card, I'm saying it's okay to do that. It's okay if all of a sudden your life is taking some kind of unexpected turn that you did not see. It's okay if you're going back on some of the things that you thought you would do earlier, okay? I think really needing at this time to to not be afraid to mix things up, to shake up your routines, to shake up what you're doing, to do them differently. Because I think by allowing things in, in your life in a sense to fall apart or to be different than what it is that you thought, then they're actually moving closer and closer to coming all together, all right? So that's what I've got for you this week, Gemini. Now, Cancer, what we've got for you this week is going to be the Sun right here in Scorpio and in opposition with Uranus and Taurus. Now, Scorpio, for you, Cancer, rules your fifth house of happiness, also of love, also of romance, of passion projects, your entrepreneurial venture, and kids, if you have any kids. All right, we've got Uranus here opposite that in your 11th house of your goals, your dreams, and your hopes for the future. I think what's going on here is you want to be happy, Cancer. You want to do more of what you love and enjoy. Who does not want that? <laughs> Um, but I think it's hard for you to figure out what a future. It's hard for you to see a future with your romantic relationships, with your business, with whatever is going on with your kids. That could have been a little bit hard. And I think what you had to make at the end of last week into this week are choices. You had to make choices about what direction do you want your life to go in, even if it means you have to sacrifice some of your happiness in the moment. And I think, Cancer, you're trying to figure out and choose who do I want to associate with, what groups of people, and what future do I see for myself that can ultimately bring me more money and that can ultimately bring me more confidence um, that I need and make me feel the way that I want to feel, feel more stable and secure. And I think once you choose to, once you figure out what goals you want for your life and once you choose those things and stick to it, even if you have to sacrifice some happiness in the moment, I think it is then going to help you. It's going to help you right here where the North Node is in Leo with the Sun in a square with the North Node. And that is in your second house of money, of stability, of security, of income, of your gifts and skills and talents. I think once you make a choice um, to support some goals and dreams and to work towards some goals and dreams of yours in a more stable and secure way, it is going to help you be more confident and bring more money to you. It's also going to help you here with Saturn, with the Sun in a sextile with Saturn in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. It's also going to help you here to be happier with the other people in your life, to be happier with your relationships. It's almost like you thinking more long term instead of short term is then going to help you be more confident and feel much better about your relationships because you're playing more of the long term game here and not the short term game and because your future and what you want for the future is becoming more and more clear because you are making choices about what it is that you want and need uh, to put your life in a better place, okay? So that's what I see happening there. Once you make that choice, we also do have Jupiter and Mercury here coming into a conjunction in your fifth house. Once you make that choice to support your goals and dreams, I think you're then gonna get more of an understanding about what you need to do in the moment here in order to be happier, in order to work with your business, in order to work with your kids or a romantic relationship to create a better situation for yourself, okay? We also do have Mercury and Jupiter making a sextile, sorry, a trine over to Chiron and Pisces. And that for you is going to be in your ninth house of something new and different. So once you make the choice to support some of your goals and dreams, not only is it going to help you understand what you need to do to be happier in the present, but it's also going to help you maybe to do new things, new things that can make you happy, new romantic relationships, new passion projects, to do new things with your business that I think will be really positive to help you move forward. While that's going on, Venus will also have just moved into Libra which will be in your fourth house of home and family. So all of a sudden, now that you've made this choice too, you're gonna to start to feel more stable and more secure in life. You're gonna to start to feel like it's easier for you to um, work with your home and family, family members, to build a home or a family that you like, and just to feel more grounded and rooted in life. It's also gonna help you too to start to balance and stabilize some of your emotions, right? The only challenge that I do see in this chart is right here where Mercury is, 
in Sagittarius um, because it is an, a shadow period about to go retrograde and that for you Cancer is in your sixth house of your job and of your daily routines. So I feel like you're getting a lot of things in order here Cancer. You're starting to figure out where exactly you want your life to go, starting to see your future more clearly, starting to figure out how you need to work towards your future in a better way so that you can feel more confident working with people better. But perhaps you have some questions still about what does it mean about your job? What does it mean about your daily routines? How exactly do you do this thing that you know that you want? You've got some clarity and some answers about your future and how you move forward on your future, but I think the strategy uh, is still an issue. I think your daily routines, how you organize your life, what you need to do new or differently on the day to day to get you to the place that you want could be a little bit challenging here. Maybe as well your health. There are some things too with your health that you need to work out and I think needing to not be afraid if you don't quite know how exactly to get to the place that you want to be yet and if your strategy isn't made clear, if your job and your daily routines are still in a little bit of disarray, um, it will come to you eventually although maybe not in the next uh, few weeks. All right so that's what I've got there. Now your card cancer is the nine of swords upright. This to me is a card of worry being afraid about things, of staying up all night, um, not can't go to sleep, lots of thoughts running around in your mind and in your head, maybe from the sixth house influence that's about to come in at the end of this week. And I think really needing to stop worrying, needing to find ways to quiet your mind. If you can't go to sleep at night, maybe you need to meditate before bed. Maybe you need to put on some noise while you sleep. Maybe you need to use some essential oils. I think your mind is making things worse than they really are. You're not in a bad spot. Sure, you have lots of big things in life that you want to accomplish. You can get them done. You can accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. The future that you see for yourself can be made real. You just can't worry and stress out too much about things that are not coming together right now because it's gonna take and drain all of your energy <laughs> um, when there are so many other things that you could be doing that could be really useful for you and that could make you happy. So just don't worry control your mind, control your thoughts, and don't let them get the best of you, you're going to be fine. So that's what I've got for you, Cancer. Sorry, I've got my dog <laughs> hanging out here in my room with me. Hey Leo, what we've got going on for you this week is going to be right here where the sun is in Scorpio and in opposition with Uranus and Taurus. Now Scorpio for you, Leo, rules your fourth house of home and family. Uh, and then we've got uh, Uranus over here opposite that in your 10th house of your career, your reputation, your social standing, and your life direction. I think what has been going on with you lately, Leo, is that you've had to make choices. You've had to make choices here between uh, what you need for your own personal enjoyment and what you need for uh, your public life, to put your life in a better place, to get what you need publicly. You're, you've been choosing between your personal needs, your private needs, and your public needs. Okay, I think you've also been choosing between home and family, what you, what kind of home life you want, what kind of things you want with your family, but also with your career, where you see your career going. All right, with the full moon here being in Taurus over Uranus last week, I really do think the choice that you needed to make, the, the option you needed to choose here, really had to do with your career. Really needing to choose your public life, your career, your reputation, what will give you the best reputation possible, which will help you to make more money in your career, to be more respected in your career, to put your life in some kind of direction that you feel much better about. I think that's the direction you need, or the choice you needed to make. Okay, once you decided to put your public needs first and to take care of some of the big issues going on with your life um, in your career, I think that's then going to help you here where the North Node is in Leo in your sign to do more of the things that you want to feel much better about yourself, especially with the Sun here making a square to the North Node. I also think if you made a choice to put your career and your reputation first and to take care of that is going to help you as well where Saturn is in Capricorn making a sextile to the sun. And that's going to be in your sixth house of your job and your daily routines. All right. I think once you do the things that you need to make sure your life is going in a direction that you like, all of a sudden you're going to start to feel better about yourself and start to feel much more comfortable with your set of daily routines that it is that you have with what it is that you're doing on the day to day. 
Once you make that choice as well, we've also got Jupiter in a conjunction with Mercury too in your fourth house of home and family. So once you decided to do the things that you needed to put your life and your career in a better spot, then all of a sudden you're going to start to understand and more doors are going to start to open about what you need to do here with your family to feel much more grounded, much more rooted, much more stable in life and to have better relationships with your family members, okay? It's also going to help you too to feel much better emotionally. With Mercury and Jupiter here also making a trine to Chiron, and with Chiron in your eighth house of changes and endings and beginnings, you may also realize you have to make some changes at home or some changes with your family members or some changes to the foundation that your life is built on, okay, so that you can start to feel like you're putting your life in this better place, having a better job, and feeling more comfortable on the day to day, all right? So that's what I see going on for you, Leo. While that's happening, we also do have Venus moving back into Libra, which for you is going to be your third house of talk and communication. So once you get your life set, start to put your life in a direction that you feel is better for you um, and, and to have a set of daily routines that can help you put your life in the direction that you want, not only is it going to help you make sense of what's going on with home and family, of what you want or need to change with your home and family, but it's going to make it much easier for you to communicate here much more freely about the things that you need and in a more balanced way about what is going on with you. All right. So I do like what's going on. The only challenge that I do see here, mostly in the chart, is going to be with Mercury entering Sagittarius on Halloween. All right, about to go retrograde. And that for you is going to be in your fifth house of happiness, also of love, also of romance, of your personal business, and of any kids if you have any. And I think there may be some more questions that you begin to have towards the end of the week about how do I be happy? How do I do more of what I love in life, of what brings me romance, of what I'm super passionate about? I think the past week, the beginning of this week, you started to get your life in a place that you like and a place that you need to feel more stable and secure. But I, and I think you're starting to make some changes perhaps at home or at the core and the foundation of your life so that you can do the things that you need to have a better job instead of daily routines and be more open about what's going on. But now the question becomes, but am I really happy? Does this really make me happy? If this doesn't make me happy, then what will? What do I need to find more joy in my life? And I think that even though you're thinking a lot about that in your mind, I don't know if you're going to make any conclusions or come up with any answers to that this week or really in the next few weeks. And I think needing to be patient and needing to have faith that you will find a way to bring more joy back into your life. It's just that you needed to take care of some of these other things first before you can start to uh, get more of an understanding of what you need to do um, uh, to feel much better and much more joyful about some things that are going on in your life, okay? All right, that's what I've got for you, Leo. Now your card here is the Four of Pentacles. Um, upright. This to me is like very Taurus, very full moon in Taurus. Uh, I think uh, this week really being a lot about stability, being a lot about security. This week, again, not a week to super rock the boat, to try a bunch of different things, but this is a week to stay true to yourself, to stay true to the, some of the things that you have been doing. I wouldn't recommend, you're a fixed sign, so it's not like you normally do this. I wouldn't recommend flip-flopping back this week. Well, I wanted this. Well, I thought I wanted that. Well, I, you know, you have to pick a choice. Um, pick something that's important to you and you have to stick to it and see it to the end, all right? And I think whatever you do, you have to make sure as well that the things that you're building and that you're creating in your life are super solid, are super secure. It's not a time this week to throw everything into disarray, even though you may be making some changes at home with your family and the foundation of your life. It's a time to try to make these changes, perhaps that you want to make in a super stable and secure way and to hold true and to hold tight to some of the things that you've been saying and thinking and some of the decisions that you've made so that you can feel better as things move on, all right? So that's what I've got there for you, Leo making sure you're okay, protecting yourself, and getting your own life in order. All right, Virgo, what we've got going on for you this week is the sun right here in Scorpio and in opposition with Uranus and Taurus. Now, Scorpio for you rules your third house of talk and communication. We've got Taurus here in your ninth house of something new and different that you have not done before. Looks like what you're doing, Virgo, is talking a lot about something new that you wanna do, traveling, studying, doing something different, moving. Uh, in some way. 
I think what you had to do last week and into this week is make choices. Make choices about what you need to do that is new or different to bring more of the excitement and more of the passion back to your life, especially with the full moon here being in Taurus right over Uranus in your ninth house. You may want to play it safe. You may want to stay close to home. You may want to do what it is that is familiar to you, but I think life is calling you elsewhere to do new and different things that you have not done before, and I think you really need to choose and make choices last week and at the beginning of this week to do things that may be a little bit different for you out of your comfort zone and take you a little bit further away from home than you were thinking. I think once you make that choice to do that, it's then going to help you hear where the North Node is in Leo because the sun is squaring the North Node. And this is going to be in your 12th house of the ins of your insides, your spirituality, and of the past. So I think you deciding to do something new that you have not done before or to move, to branch out, to try something different is going to help to bring more peace to yourself. It's going to help you to feel more whole. Uh, it's going to also help you to feel like you were overcoming the past and moving forward in a more positive direction. I think it's also going to help you hear where Saturn is in Capricorn with the sun in a sextile with Saturn to be happier, okay, in your fifth house. I think it's gonna help you have more positive conversations with people, may also help you to have better conversations with romantic relationships, potential romantic partners, may also help you have better conversations with kids, if you have any kids, or about your passion projects and your hobbies, all right? So I do like what's going on here. Once you choose to do something new and different, uh, and to be open to that, then you're gonna start to feel more at peace, and you're gonna start to do more things that you love and enjoy. While that's going on, we also do have Jupiter and Mercury in a conjunction in your third house. So once you make the choice to do something new, it's then going to get easier for you to communicate with the other people in your life in a way that makes sense and hopefully in a way that's exciting to you and that other people can understand. Mercury and Jupiter is also going to be in a trine to Chiron and Pisces, which for you is in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So I think once you start to communicate about what you need to do new or differently to feel more excited about your life, I think it's going to help you here with relationships to smooth over any rough edges with relationships. It's going to help you have better partnerships. It's going to help the other people in your life to get on board with you. And it may also help you too with some old relationships from the past to feel much better about those as well. Now that you're talking about some things that really do resonate truly with your heart and make you happy. Okay, so that's what we've got going there. While that's happening, there's another thing I also really like. Venus just moved into Libra, which for you is in your second house of money. Uh, also of your confidence, of your sense of personal worth and security. So I think once you decide to do something new and different and to open yourself up to newer different experiences, not only are you going to feel more at peace in your life, feel happier, not only is it going to be easier for you to talk to your relationships and to move forward with some relationships from old things with relationships that may have been hard, it's going to help you to bring more money to you, to feel more confident, to feel more secure in your own right and who it is that you are and to feel more worthy of yourself and of what's going on. So I think that's very positive. The only challenge that I might see is going to be right here where Mercury is moving into Sagittarius, which is your ruler, which makes the super important about to go retrograde. Mercury in Sagittarius rules your fourth house of home and family. So I think what then becomes a challenge uh, for, the, for the end of this week and really for the next few weeks is your home, is your emotional situation, is the foundation of your life. Maybe you're realizing, oh, there's something new and different that I need to do in life in order to be happy. But maybe that brings lots of questions now about home. Okay, I realized I need to move. I need to travel. I need to do this. Well, now what does that mean about my home? Do I have to sell my home? Do I have to get rid of it? Do I have to do something else? Maybe a lot of it too comes emotionally. All right, I'm going to do something I haven't done before. It makes me happy. But emotionally, this is a major adjustment. This is something I've never done before. How do I build my life on some new or different kind of foundation that really resonates with me? Could also, again, bring questions about relationships with family members too that could come into the picture with this kind of alignment. Okay, and I think really needing to be patient if you don't have the answers quite yet about where you're living, who you're living with about your family, about what you're feeling emotionally, about what foundation you need to build your life on, you will get those answers eventually. It will become more clear to you what you need to do in that part of your life and to just have faith uh, at the time being that everything will work out as long as you focus on bringing more of the passion back to your life and doing something new and different that really does excite you. Okay, so that's what I've got for you, Virgo. Now your card. 
uh, for the week is the Seven of Swords. Upright. This card to me, Virgo, shows up when you feel like you gotta do things in secret. You gotta like hide things from other people. <laughs> And a lot of times this card to me is a warning. It's saying, look, you don't have to hide things from other people. Like, what are you so afraid of? Are you afraid that people will judge you if you do tell them the things that you tell them? Are you afraid that um, that it will upset people? Are you afraid that people will betray you? I think this card is saying, if you think you gotta hide things from others and do things in secret, you really don't have to do things in secret. Let people know what's going on with you. Let people know what you're feeling. If you're hesitant about telling some people, then maybe you don't tell everyone. Pick a few people that you're really close to, your intimate or, or some partners, partnerships in your life that you really kind of like and want to keep close and tell those people instead, okay? I think that's really the message of this week because relationships don't look bad for you this week. It's just stop trying to hide. I think if you let people know what you're feeling, what excites you, what you're passionate about, other people are gonna be way more willing to accommodate you than you think. But if you wanna keep something secret and may cause some problems with relationships down the road that really wouldn't have been problems <laughs> uh, if you just were open about it um, now. And I think the people who wanna be in your life um, and who really care about you will be okay with what it is you have to say, even if it is um, scary to you, or um, or or if it or if it runs deep, <laughs> the things you want to talk about. Okay, so that's what I've got for you this week, Virgo. Hey Libra, what we've got going on for you this week is the sun right here in Scorpio, making an opposition to Uranus and Taurus. Now the sun in Scorpio for you is gonna be in your second house of money, of your confidence, of your sense of self-worth and security. And what we've got is Uranus opposite that in your eighth house of changes, of your deepest, most intimate relationships, and usually of money going out, money you have to spend. All right, I think what's happening here is that you're trying to make choices last week and into this week about money, about money that you're spending versus money that you're saving, about working with other people versus working with yourself, <laughs> working alone. Maybe choices as well that you had to make about some change you wanna make um, and some things that you need to feel more stable and secure in life. Now you're kind of interesting, Libra, because you've got yeah, um, Taurus, <laughs> which rules the eighth house which is typically a Scorpio rolled house. <laughs> um, and I think for you, what I might recommend here uh, is gonna be slightly different than what I'd recommend for other people, especially with the full moon here being in Taurus. I might actually recommend that you, Libra, out of all the signs, might actually have to make more changes in your life than some of the others. I've been telling a lot of the other signs, you gotta focus on stability, on being more stable and secure. And I think what you may have to do, Libra, is make choices to change your life to hopefully put it in a place that you feel can be more stable. You may also have to spend some money in order to get money. You may also have to work with people uh, or to change the way that you work with people so that you can start to partner with people who start to um, get more of you and more of your worth and what's going on. And I think once you make the decision to change your life, once you make the decision to work with other people that can support you in your best interests in a better kind of way, I think it's then going to help you here where the North Node is in Leo. And that for you is gonna be your 11th house of your goals, your dreams, and your hopes for the future with the Sun squaring the North Node there. So once you decide to make some changes in your life that you need to make in order to create a life that you really want in order to partner with people that are better for you, you're all of a sudden gonna start to feel more free. It's like all of a sudden more doors are gonna start to open for you, you're gonna see the future more clearly, and you're gonna start to associate with groups of people who are better for you. Also with the sun and a sextile here with Saturn and Capricorn and that being in your fourth house of home and family, I think once you decide to make some change in your life and to work with people who are better for you, not only are doors going to open up about your future, but it's also gonna help you to um, work better with home and family, to create more of a life that you want on a more firm foundation. Uh, that you need in order to move forward. And it's also gonna help you to emotionally, to figure out what's going on with you emotionally and to feel more stable in that sense, all right? After that happens and you make that decision, we also do have Jupiter here in a conjunction with Mercury in your second house. So once you decide what change you need to make and who you need to work with that can support your own needs and interests, then I think it's gonna be easier for you to be more confident, to bring more money in, and to feel more stable and secure in life now that you've made choices to do the things that you need that can ultimately help you even if you have to shake some things up in your life at first, all right? 
Um, Mercury and Jupiter are also going to make a trine over to Chiron and Pisces, which rules your sixth house of your job and your daily routines. So once you make that choice to change your life in some way, not only is it going to help you feel more stable and secure in life, reach some goals and dreams, but it's going to help you make more money from your job. It's going to help you be more confident about your job. It's going to help you use more of your gifts and skills and talents on the day to day in a positive way for you to feel like you're living a life that is more uniquely you that appreciates what you have to offer. So I really do like that. Also, while that's going on, we've got Venus, your ruler, going back into your sign, a sign that it really loves. I think also helping you now on Wednesday to start to feel like you're doing more in your life of what you want and need that makes you truly comfortable and like you're starting to finally partner with people and with relationships that really really do get you it's almost like you needed to make some changes in your life and make some changes in your relationship so that you can start to feel more confident do the things you want and need bring more money to you and feel better about who you are overall okay so i really like what's happening the challenge though libra does come right here where mercury is going into sagittarius um, towards the end of the week. And Sagittarius here rules for you your third house of talk and communication. So what that could bring perhaps are some confusing conversations that start to come in at the end of this week and over the next few weeks while Mercury um, starts to go retrograde, all right? I think you've got a lot of things figured out here about what you want and need in life to be more stable and secure, about how you can feel more comfortable with your life, how you can feel more at home or work better with home. But I think there may be a lot more to work out and to communicate with other people about about your details about how you work with people in your community in your immediate environment um, maybe also you might have to work some things out in your mind uh, about how you think about your life or about how you talk to people about some of the things that it is that you were thinking there may be some things with communication that could be a little challenging for you that you may be unsure of and I think needing to not worry if you're unsure of how to communicate with people about what you're feeling about what's your belief systems in the right ways that will come in time even if you don't know right now and to just be patient while everything were, um, comes together and while you sort some other stuff out in the meantime, all right? So that's what I've got for you, Libra. Now your card is the Five of Cups um, reversed. Now when the Five of Cups is upright, typically what I see here is, is people focusing on the wrong things. People focusing on things that went wrong. Oh, well, I wanted this in my life and this didn't happen, and then wallowing in that. And I think with this card being reversed this week, it's saying, look, look, Libra, if things didn't work out for you, they didn't work out for you, it's time to move on. You got better things ahead. Venus is moving into your sign. That's beautiful. Venus loves being there. So I think what is happening with this card is saying, look, it's time to cut your losses. It's time to forget about the past. It's time to forget about things that did not work for you. And it's time to move forward. If you think about the past, if you think about how hard things used to be or once were, then it's going to distract you from the beauty and from the good things that are on offer to you. And I think needing to focus more on the good instead of the bad so that you don't lose some good opportunities that I see for you uh, in the chart. All right. So that's what I've got for you this week, Libra. Scorpio, what we've got going on for you this week, we've got the sun right here in Scorpio in your sign, your first house, making an opposition here to Uranus and Taurus in your seventh house of partnerships and of relationships. So I think what's been going on with you, Scorpio, um, last week and into this week, you had to make choices here. You had to make choices specifically about yourself and about your relationships, who's in your life, who's not in your life, how you partner with people, how people partner with you. Now, because Uranus is in your seventh house and because that's where the full moon is, I think a lot of your choices, Scorpio, had to be about relationships. You had to choose how to best work with the other people in your life and how to work with your relationships in a more stable and secure kind of way, okay? I think that's so important to you. As to where I might tell other people, you gotta come out of relationships to focus on yourself, I'm gonna tell you, Scorpio, you really had to make choices at this full moon to go along with others, to compromise for others, to see what the other people want and need, and to figure out how to work with the other people in your life in better ways that can feel much more comfortable, stable, and secure, okay? Once you make those choices and decisions on how you need to work with your relationships or how your relationships need to work with you, I then think it's going to help you hear where the North Node is in Leo, which is going to be in your what? Your 10th house? Your career. 
your social standing, your reputation with the sun and the square with the nodes, you working with your relationships, you creating relationships that are more stable and more secure are then going to help you to put your life in the right direction, to move up the ladder and to have a better career, to have a better reputation. It was just a matter first of figuring out what people could help you the most improve your reputation and sticking with those people and making compromises for them, all right? So that's what I think is going on there. I also do think that if you can make those choices um, to work with other people, it's also going to help you here as well where Saturn is in Capricorn with the Sun in a sextile with Saturn, which is in your third house of talk and of communication. So you working with other people is not only going to help you to increase your career and your reputation to put your life in the right place, but to communicate better, to work on some communication projects uh, in some way that I think really can help you. Okay. Um, while that's happening, or right after that's happening, there's also Jupiter in a conjunction with Mercury also in your first house. So once you make the decisions on who you need to work with in your life and on how you need to work with people, not only is it going to help you to <clears throat> increase your reputation and your social standing and to communicate more freely, but it's also going to help you too to get the things that you want, to understand yourself better, to feel much better about yourself too and who it is that, that you are. Now this Mercury and Jupiter is also going to make a trine over here to Chiron and Pisces, which for you is going to be in your fifth house of happiness, of love, of romance, and also of passion projects. So I think once you make this choice to work with your relationships in life and the other people in your life, again, not only are you going to feel way better about where your life is going, but I think it's going to be easier for you to do more of what makes you happy, to find more joy and passion in your life, to work on a passion project, um, or to even uh, get out there and date and work better with a romantic partner. All right. So I really do, I really do like that all around. While that's happening, another thing I really like is Venus here moving back into Libra, which is going to be your 12th house of your insides, your spirituality, and of your past. I think what this can help you do uh, towards the end of the week when this happens is to feel much better spiritually, is to feel much better internally. Maybe you've been feeling a little bit uncomfortable lately inside, like there's something from the past that you can't quite put your finger on, you just haven't been feeling quite right. And I think Venus going back into Libra is going to help you to find the internal balance that it is that you need, again, to stabilize your emotions um, so that you can move forward. It's almost like you needed to make some choices about your relationships about what's going on with relationships so that not only could you feel better about where your life is going and be happier, but you can find more of that peace that you need and overcome the past so that you can move on. All right. So I like what's happening there. The only challenge to me in this chart is going to be here where Mercury is moving into Sagittarius, where it is about to go retrograde. And that for you, Scorpio, is going to be your second house. It's going to be your second house of money. Uh, also of your gifts and skills and talents and of your confidence. So that to me could bring a challenge at the end of this week and really for the next few weeks with you figuring out how do I get money? How do I make money? How do I bring more money, uh, more income to me? Could also be a challenge as well when it comes to your own confidence, your own self-worth, believing in yourself. Could also be a challenge too when it comes to your gifts and skills and talents. What gifts and skills and talents do you have and how can you use them? All right. I think you're starting to work with people who will hopefully really get you, who can help you make big moves in your career. And I think you're starting to move forward on some of these relationships uh, or having answers about your relationships feeling much better. But I think the problem or the question now is just all about how do I use my talents in these relationships with other people? How do I uh, feel confident now in these partnerships or with these situations and relationships that I now have? What do I do uh, with all of that? And you may not get the answers overnight. You may not figure out overnight how you best can contribute to your relationships to feel better about them or how you can be more confident in your relationship situations, but to not stress out. You will get the answers over time about what it is that you need to do and how things need to happen and to just be patient as all of those things start to come together. Now your card, Scorpio for the week, is the Queen of Wands reversed. Oh, this is, uh, this is a beautiful card. <laughs> this I also is kind of interesting. To me, the Queen of Wands, um, when I see her upright, she is not afraid to put herself out there. She is not afraid to shine her light, to let people see her. She is so loving, so caring, so kind. And when this card's reversed, it's almost like you're hiding your light. It's like you aren't are you aren't showing the world who it is that you really are, um, and, and you're kind of dimming to fit in, in a way. And I think, to me, this card is saying, look, 
you may not be quite sure how you can contribute to other people, what you have to offer your relationships or what you need even to bring more money into your life, but that doesn't mean that you need to stop showing up. That doesn't mean that you have to hide just because you're not sure of, of what's going on there. Keep showing up every day is what I would say. If you don't know what you're good at, take the few things that you are good at and use more of those and do more of those and keep putting yourself out there. And I think by you putting yourself out there and showing everyone your heart and what you have to offer, even if it's little, even if you don't think it's much, I think is ultimately gonna help you um, to be where it is that you need to be and is ultimately going to help you understand your true worth and your true value, even if it doesn't seem like it at the moment. All right, so that's what I've got for you this week, Scorpio. All right, Sagittarius, what we've got going on for you this week is going to be right here where the sun is in Scorpio and in opposition with Uranus in Taurus. Now, Scorpio for you rules your 12th house of your insides, your spirituality, and of the past. And Uranus here in Taurus is going to be in your 6th house of your job and of your daily routines, also of your health too in that house. What I think is going on you know, last week and at the beginning of this week is choices. You're having to make lots of choices. These choices are between your job and what you do on the day to day and what you're feeling inside spiritually, what you need to feel more comfortable uh, internally. I think with the full moon here being uh, in Taurus on top of Uranus, the choices you needed to make had to be about your job. What kind of set of daily routines do you need to feel more stable and more secure, even if it makes you a little bit uncomfortable, even if it takes you out of your comfort zone, even if you're not sure <laughs> if it really resonates with you on the inside, you got to go with the job. Uh, you got to take care of things in the day to day. You got to take care of your health. Okay. And I think that's the choice you needed to make. Once you make that choice though, I think it's gonna make other things a lot easier for you, especially right here where the North Node is in Leo. And that for you is gonna be in your ninth house of something new and different that you have not done before with the Sun squaring the nodes. So once you make the choice here, to focus on your job, to do a lot of work on the day to day, to get your life in order. I think then it's gonna help you to do something new you haven't done before, to get more excited about your life, to get more passionate about your life, and to open yourself up to a bunch of new and different experiences. I also think as well, it's gonna help you here where Saturn is in Capricorn, making a sextile to the sun in your second house of money, of your confidence and of your gifts and skills and talents. Once you commit to some kind of job, to some kind of set of daily routines, to fix in your health, even if it's not quite what you feel comfortable about, it's not only gonna help you get more excited about life, do something new you haven't done before, but it's gonna help you to feel more stable and secure, to make more money. <laughs> um, it's gonna help you to use more of your gifts and skills and talents and to bring more of those out into the open so that you can see your worth and your value, okay? Um, so I really do like that. Yeah, helping you to make money, <laughs> it's always a good thing. Um, now, after that occurs, we're then going to have around Wednesday, Jupiter come into a conjunction with Mercury at the last few degrees of Scorpio. And I think that's what's going to help you do once you make the choice. Once you make the choice to focus on your job and to focus on your daily routines, then a lot of the internal healing can start to come. Then it's going to get a lot easier for you to feel more at peace with your life, to understand what's been going on with you emotionally, and to overcome the past so that it is that you can move forward. Jupiter and Mercury here are also going to be making a trine as well to Chiron in Pisces, which for you is going to be your fourth house of home and of family. So I think as well, once you make the choice to focus on your job and your daily routines, it's also going to help you too to feel more stable, more secure in life, to be more at peace with your home and with your family so that you can start to build your life on a more solid foundation moving forward, being more excited about life and more confident like you're making more money using more of your gifts and skills and talents. All right, another thing I really do like about this week too also comes around Wednesday and Halloween when Venus moves back into the sign of Libra, which for you is going to be your 11th house of your goals, your dreams, and of your friends. So if you've been feeling like it's been hard for you to fit in anywhere, like you don't have friends or friends have been hard lately, I think Venus moving back into your 11th house, once you choose to do things on the day-to-day -day that you need to do, is going to make it easier for you to find the group of people that you're meant to be with that really get you. I think it's also going to help you too to envision a future for yourself that you do like much better and to see the future hopefully a little bit more clearly or to feel more comfortable with where things in your life are going. The challenge for you though is going to be right here where Mercury is moving into Sagittarius towards the end of the week and about to go retrograde. And that actually for you, Sagittarius, is in your first house. The first house rules your identity. And that challenge is going to be you figuring out who you are. 
now that you're committing to some kind of job, some kind of daily routine, some kind of practical existence that I actually really think is really good for you to do new things, to feel more stable in life, to make more money. I think the hard thing for you now is figuring out, well, who am I? Who am I really? Who is my, what is my identity now? How is my identity different? Or now that my life is different, how do I need to change the way I think of myself and the beliefs that I have about myself to be something else to match who my identity now is? And I think that could be a little bit hard and a little bit confusing for you to figure out. And I don't think you're going to figure it out this week. I don't even know if you're going to figure that out uh, in the next week or two. I think you're going to need to wait until Mercury comes out of retrograde in order for you to feel like you're um, understanding more who you are and understanding more about yourself. But I think needing to be patient this week, even if you're getting used to some kind of new identity. I just got the image of like a snake shedding its skin. <laughs> I almost feel like that's where you're at, Sagittarius. You're like a snake shedding its skin, about to come into a new skin <laughs> uh, of sorts, and it's just a matter of getting comfortable and getting acquainted with the new life and set of daily routines uh, that you are in. But that will happen if you just wait things out and don't get too frustrated in the process. Now your card uh, for the week, Sagittarius, is the Hierophant. Oh, this is such a Sagittarius kind of card. <laughs> you know, this card is really interesting when it's reversed. Sometimes uh, this card to me can indicate separating from a group, um, doing things counter culture against the grain. I almost want to say this week, doing things against the grain is positive for you. If you're doing things that you have never done before, if the way that you're seeing yourself <laughs> is totally different, if you're saying, I never in a million years would have done this, and you know what, now here I am and I'm doing this, and I'm not sure how I feel, I think you're right where you're supposed to be. And I think once you accept that you are different from anyone else, and that you're even different from who you were a year, two years, three years, four years ago, it's going to open you up and liberate you to be who it is that you need to be and to associate more with the groups of people that you need to associate with. And I think needing to not be afraid here to stand alone and to stand apart and to do things counterculture <laughs> to what you would have done before because I think you will find there perhaps is more support there than you want and that even you yourself uh, are stronger than you think and can catch your own self if you fall or fail, <clears throat> which I don't think you will. Sagittarius, not with Jupiter about to enter your sign. Uh, so that's what I've got for you uh, this week. Capricorn, now what we've got for you this week is the sun right here in Scorpio, making an opposition to Uranus and Taurus. Now Scorpio, for you Capricorn, rules your 11th house of your goals, your dreams, and your hopes for the future. Also your group associations, uh, who your friends are. And Uranus is in Taurus, which is gonna be your fifth house of your happiness, of kids, of passion projects, um, what else? Of romance and also of kind of like your own leadership style falls into that house. And it, what's going on last week and this week is that you're having to make choices. You're having to make choices between what makes you happy and between where it is that you see your life going. You're having to make choices as well uh, between your group of friends, what your friends want, fitting in with your friends and standing out and being your own person. I think with the full moon here being on Uranus this past week, you have to choose what makes you happy? You have to choose what you need as an individual to stand up on your own two feet. Could be a little bit hard because maybe you want to fit in and you can't fit in. Could be a little bit hard too because maybe you want to envision the future and maybe you don't know right now where your future is going. Okay, I think that's okay though. <laughs> I think you need to not worry if it's hard for you to see the future or if you're disassociating from a group of friends that you used to, associate, used to associate with. Right now for you Capricorn, focusing on what makes you happy, on what you can do to bring more of the pleasure, more of the joy, more of the romance into your life is going to be key. I think once you can do that, once you can make the choice to then focus on that, it's then going to help you here where the North Node is in Leo with the Sun squaring the North Node. And that for you, Capricorn, is going to be in your, your eighth house of change, changes, endings, and beginnings. The eighth house is a little bit of a rough one. Um, that's because even though it's what you're meant to do at this time, uh, I think if you can focus on what makes you happy in life, on what you need to bring more of the joy, passion, romance back to your life in the moment, it's gonna help you to make some big changes in your life that you need, that are really meant for you at this time to create more of a life than it is that you really want. Could be hard to make these changes with the eighth house involved, but I think you really do need to change your life at this time, Capricorn, to do more of what you want. 
that can bring the joy to you. I think as well, you choosing to be happy is also gonna help you here where Saturn is, making a sextile to the sun in your sign. Not only is it gonna help you to create more of a life that you really want and make some changes to do that, it's also gonna help you to feel much better about yourself, about who you are, and like you're doing the things that you need. While that's going on, we also do have Jupiter in a conjunction with Mercury in your 11th house. I think what this can bring, once you choose to be happy, once you choose to follow your passion, it's not all of a sudden gonna make it clear where your life needs to go, what your future's all about, uh, what your goals need to be, but not the other way around. You have to choose to be happy first, and then the future will start to come more and more into focus, okay? And I think that's what starts to happen towards the middle and end of the week. With Jupiter and Mercury making a trine over here to Chiron and Pisces, and let's see, with Pisces in your third house of talk and communication, I also think towards the end of the week, it's going to be a lot easier for you to communicate and to think about your future and where your life is going now that you have put your own happiness first, all right? So I do think that's positive. Another thing I really like about this week is Venus moving back into Libra, which for you is going to be your 10th house. It's going to be your 10th house of your career, your reputation, and your social standing. Maybe there have been some things about your career lately that have been hard for you or about where your life is going, not really sure where your life is going or what direction you want your life to go in. And I think now that you've made this choice about what you need to be happy, not only is it helping you to see a better future for yourself, create a life you really want, but it's going to help you to make sense of your career. It's going to help you to, to answer those questions about where your life is going um, and to find more of the balance so that you can start to feel like you're putting your life in a direction that that at least you have a better understanding of, okay? Um, so I do think that there's a lot of questions that can be answered for you uh, this week if you just put your own happiness first to smooth out some of the big, um, to smooth out some of the rough edges when it comes to your career and your life direction. Okay, the challenge though is going to be right here where Mercury is in Sagittarius, where it's about to go retrograde. And that's gonna be your 12th house of your insides of your spirituality and of the past. What I see going on for you, Capricorn, I see you finally figuring out what you want in life, what you enjoy, and starting to do more of what you enjoy and making the changes to make that happen and feeling much better as a result about a lot of things in your life, about where your life is going. The challenge for you though is your, is your past. <laughs> it's how do I get over the past? How do I let old things go? I think you realize you have to make a huge change. I think you realize things gotta be really different in your life, but maybe you're attached to old things. Maybe you don't wanna let things go. Maybe you've got subconscious habits and patterns that you keep on relying on that are making it difficult for you. Maybe as well, it's uncomfortable for you to do the things that you know that your heart wants and needs. And I think over the next few weeks, it's gonna be a challenge for you to figure out how to let things go, how to let the past go that you may be attached to. I don't think it's gonna happen overnight. I do think you're gonna need more than this week and more than the next week or two to figure that out. But I do believe you are in a process of letting old things go so that you can move on to other new, different, and better things that are meant for you. And I think just needing to be patient over the next few weeks and to have faith that everything will come together as you work some really deep, personal, private, and subconscious issues out so that you can move forward, all right? So that's what I've got for you, Capricorn. Now your card for the week is the Nine of Wands reversed. Okay, the Nine of Wands to me is actually one of like Ooh, this is a good one. This is to me, the nine, you know, the nine of wands is almost 10. So it's actually a card to me almost of completion, um, of success in a lot of ways. But sometimes what happens when we get the nine of wands is that there's, we feel like we can't complete what we need to complete, especially when it's reversed. And I think what I see Capricorn is you're about to, you're about to um, change, you're about to come into an entirely new cycle in your life, Capricorn, making a huge change to do something different, and I think you're afraid of making that change. You're afraid that it's not gonna work out. You're afraid that things are gonna go wrong. You're afraid that you don't have what it takes to make the life that you really want come to manifest, and I think this card is saying you have to believe in yourself and you have to persevere. You can do it. Don't lose hope now. Don't lose faith. You are almost there to a spot that you need to be at. That's gonna be better for you because the North Node is about to move out of your eighth house of changes all right and you need to believe and trust that you are going in the right direction and to not give up now and lose everything that you have been working so hard for thus far all right so that's what i've got for you 
Capricorn. Aquarius, what we've got going on for you this week is the sun right here in Scorpio and in opposition with Uranus and Taurus. Now, Scorpio for you rules your 10th house of your career, your reputation, and your social standing, and we've got Uranus here in your fourth house of home and family. So what may have been going on for you last week into this week? Choices, choices that you may have had to make between these two things, between your personal needs and your public needs, between your home and your family and your career. Um, and I think what you needed to do, especially with the full moon here being on top of Uranus and Taurus, you needed to choose to put your home life first, to put your personal and private needs first, to put your emotional needs first. That may be hard because you may have to sacrifice some things in your career. You may have to sacrifice some things in your life direction to put your life in, the, in, life in a place that you feel is going to be better for you. But I think really needing here to focus on your own emotional well-being and to focus on your home and family and to making sure all of that's okay, that you feel more privately and personally stable and secure in life. All right, I think if you can make the choice to do that, it is going to help you here where the North Node is in Leo with the Sun squaring the North Node. The North Node in Leo for you is going to be your seventh house of partnerships in relationships, usually of the one-on-one -on -one variety. So once you choose to focus on your own personal emotional needs and to work better with your home and with your family, all of a sudden it's gonna open up doors for you to have better relationships, to start to partner one-on-one -on -one with the right people or with people who are better for you. I also think if you can choose your personal and private needs and get right with yourself emotionally, it's gonna help you here where Saturn is in Capricorn making a sextile to the sun in your 12th house of your insides and of your spirituality. It's gonna help you to overcome the past and to feel more at peace with yourself. While that's going on, we also do have Jupiter and Mercury also about to come conjunct in your 10th house of career. So once you make the decision here to put your home and your family first, to put your emotional needs first, all of a sudden you're gonna start to understand better what you really wanted all along in your career, what you really needed to put your life in the direction that it is that you wanted and get yourself the right reputation. Okay, so I think that's gonna be positive as we move further throughout the week. Jupiter and Mercury here are also gonna be in a trine to Chiron which is in your second house of money, of your confidence and of your gifts and skills and talents. So I think the more that you start to understand what you want in your career, what you want and need to put your life in a better place, it's gonna help you to make more money, it's gonna help you to be more confident and to use more of your gifts and skills and talents, okay? And to hopefully heal some, some wounds around that area from the past few years of your life. While that's going on now around Halloween, Venus also is going to move back into Libra in your ninth house of something new and different that you have not done before. So I think as well you're going to start to feel as you move throughout the week that it's easier for you to explore, to bring more of the passion back to your life, to do something new, that you're going to feel much more internally internally balanced because you're doing more of what excites you, all right? And I think really what you needed to do to fix, if there was anything that you feel like is in disarray, Aquarius, what you really needed to do first was to focus on your emotional needs and what you personally wanted, and then that then is going to open up the doors for you then to have the career you want, to find more passion and excitement in life, to overcome the past, and to move forward. The challenge though that I see this week is gonna be right here where Mercury is in Sagittarius about to go retrograde and that for you is your 11th house of your goals, your dreams and your hopes for the future. Perhaps now that you are creating more of a life that you feel resonates with you more personally, the question then becomes well, what is going on with my future? Where is my life going? Also your groups of friends. Who do I associate with now? I'm getting my own personal needs met. Maybe too you have relationships with one or two key people in your life, but maybe you're uncertain of what the future looks like, of what you want your future to be, and of the groups of people and of your friends, how your friends fit into the equation. And I think needing to not be afraid if that's unclear, needing to not be afraid if you don't quite understand what your goals are or if your friends um, are different, aren't quite what you thought they would be, or if you want different kinds of friends. You'll figure that out in time, although it may not happen this week and it may not happen in the next few weeks either. So just be patient and have faith. All right, now your card um, for the week, Aquarius, is going to be the Hermit. Ooh, the Hermit reversed. This card to me happens with two reasons. There are two things. First of all, you could not be listening to yourself. Maybe you're trying to avoid spending time alone. 
You know, maybe you need to spend time alone. Maybe you need to get in touch with yourself and what's going on. And I actually think you do. Like, I think this is a very personal moment that you're having with Uranus, your ruler, in your first house. And I think this card to me is a reminder to say, look, you got to separate yourself from everyone else. You need to take some time out for everyone else. You may want to be out and about with groups of people, socializing with friends. Aquarius typically does like to be out and about with a group of people. But there are some times when you got to focus on your own needs first and when you have to spend time to yourself and you could want to avoid facing your own inner truth and I think this card is saying look you need to go inward and stop avoiding the personal things that you know um, that need your attention all right Sometimes this card can also appear when you are spending way too much time alone if you want to go the opposite of that here um, and needing to make sure you get that balance right. Spending time with yourself versus spending time with others. But based on the looks of your chart, um, Aquarius, I'm going to say here, I think that this is going that you're not spending enough time alone. I think you need to do some soul searching. I think you need to do some introspection. And I think you need to not be afraid here to listen to what your spirit is saying and is whispering to you uh, from the depths. Because I think it's going to be very, very good for you if you don't let everyone else influence you and get in the way. All right, so that's what I've got for you, Aquarius. All right, Pisces, what we've got going on for you this week is the sun right here in Scorpio in opposition with Uranus and Taurus. Now, Scorpio, for you, Pisces, rules your ninth house of something new and different that you have not done before. We also have Uranus here in your third house of talk and of communication, also of the things that are familiar with you. I think what was going on last week and this week, you had to make choices. The choices you were making were between doing something new and doing something familiar <laughs> or between your belief systems, what you believe and what's right in front of your face, the facts <laughs> about some things. I think the choice that you need to make here, especially with the full moon being in Taurus right here on top of the Uranus in your third house, the choice you needed to make is, is to not travel, is to not do something new. The choice you needed to make here is to stick more with what's familiar to you, is to stick more with your immediate environment. Uh, is to communicate uh, more openly with the people and the things and the places that are right in front of your face. <laughs> you could want to do something new. You could want to travel. You could want to explore, to move. But I think with Uranus in your third house, it's saying cool it on all of that. Focus on what is right in front of your face. And that's what's going to help you the most at this time and in communicating more clearly with the people that are around you. If you can do that, it's going to help you right here where the North Node is in Leo with the Sun squaring the North Node. And that for you is going to be in your sixth house of your job and of your daily routines. Okay, I think if you can focus on communicating with what you have instead of looking for new frontiers, it's going to help you have a better job, a better set of daily routines, feel happier about your job, and to even have better health. Okay. I also think here it's going to help you where Saturn is in Capricorn making a sextile to your son from your 11th house of your goals, your dreams, your hopes for the future. I think it's also going to help you to envision a new, a different, or a better future for yourself and to associate with groups of people and friends that I think really can uh, excite you and really are good for you. Uh, while that's going on, or once you make that choice, I also do see some good things happening here where Jupiter is in a conjunction with Mercury towards the middle of the week. Once you decide here to focus on what's in front of you, to communicate more clearly with what you have and with what's familiar to you, it's then going to help you feel more passionate, get more excited about your life, and figure out what new things that it is that you need to do within the current framework that your life exists in. Okay, so that's what I see there with Jupiter and Mercury also making a trine to Chiron and Chiron in your first house. I think you communicating in your immediate environment is going to help you, again, to just feel better about yourself and about who you are to overcome maybe some things that may have been difficult uh, in your life lately so that you can, again, feel more happy, excited, and passionate. While that's going on, we also do have Venus moving backwards into Libra, a sign it loves, which is going to be in your eighth house of changes and of endings and beginnings. So I think what's happening here is that once you decide to work within your current environment, not only is it gonna help you to have a better set of daily routines, to associate with the right groups of people and to get more excited about your life, but it's also gonna help you figure out what you really want in your life, what you desire deeply. It's gonna help you have deeper connections and deeper relationships with the people in your life. It's also gonna help you to figure out what you need to change or do differently within your current framework here to feel just better all around. So that's what I see happening happening there. 
Um, the challenge though could come as we move throughout the week towards the weekend. That's because Mercury is going to move into Sagittarius uh, where it will go retrograde very soon. And that for you is in your 10th house of your career, your reputation and your social standing. So it's almost like Pisces, you're getting to a point where you're like, you know what, I can't be crazy anymore. <laughs> I can't be crazy doing all this exciting stuff, adventuring all the time. I gotta settle down a little bit and do what I have, do what I've been working towards. Okay, and I think that's a good thing for you to do to help you grow more deeply into life and organize your life better. But I think Pisces, you may still have some questions at the end of this week. What does that mean about my career? What does that mean about my ambition? What does that mean about my reputation? What does it mean about where my life is going? And am, am I sacrificing my career? Am I sacrificing my reputation? Am I no, no longer ambitious anymore? Because I am basically agreeing to not go for something new and different that could be exciting. Um, and I think that could be a little bit hard for you to figure out if I'm gonna not do something new and if I'm gonna stick with what's familiar to me, what does that mean for my career? What does that mean that I believe now about about my career, about my life direction, about my reputation that I think you're gonna have to work out. It doesn't necessarily mean because you're staying with what's familiar that you're doing something wrong, uh, but it may mean that you have to adjust your belief systems about your career and about your life in the process. Do I think you're gonna understand overnight what those are? No, I think it's gonna take time more than just this week for you to figure that out and really just needing to be patient as Mercury goes retrograde and to not freak out about your career, about your reputation until more of the insights start to unfold and come to you in the future and to just have faith that you are doing the right things or doing the things that you need to be doing. All right, so that's what I've got for you, Pisces. Now your card for the week is, oh, this is interesting. This one is specific to this deck, so you won't find it in a typical Rider weight deck, but this card is called Moonchild. Um, I actually really love this card because this card is all about the phases of the moon. To me, this card says sometimes life is up and sometimes life is down. Sometimes life asks you to adventure and do things you haven't done before, and sometimes life asks you to stay still. You know, and I think this card is saying you got to go with the flow. You got to go with the flow just because, you know, life is pushing you in this one direction and it wasn't what you thought your life would be. Doesn't mean you're doing the wrong thing. Doesn't mean you're bad. Doesn't mean you're ruining your life. All it means is that your life has now changed and now your life, God, the universe is calling you to do something else that's different than what you've done and to be okay with that. Sometimes when this card appears reversed, we fight, we go against the flow, we go against the tides of the moon in our life and we think, no, 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 this is where my life is calling me to, but it's not for me, it's not for me, I really need to be over here where your mind starts to fight with the divine plan of sorts. And I think this card is saying, look, if you're being called to do things that you haven't done before that you didn't think you would do um, and, and that may be hard for you to accept, do it. You need to go where you need to go where the luck is in your life. You need to go where all of the cards are aligning in your favor, even if it means sacrificing some other things. Because times will change, and just like the moon does, and eventually things will be different than they are right now. But right now, you need to go in this spot where you're being called. All right. So that's what I've got for you, Pisces.